Hi all. Um, I have what I've been doing um, in the garage. I've been doing quite a bit of work without actually filming because it takes obviously twice as long to film at the same time. Now I've been tidying up around the garage, which I'll probably show you in a bit. I'm still going through it. I've been fitting a lot of uh, fuse spares for my um, bench equipment, so they're not actually on plug sockets. So um, they free up some plug sockets as well. So I've been doing stuff like that. I've fitted some lights in, some lights behind you there. And you should see some lights come on when I put this one on behind me. They're above the bike, um, the bike lift, which sometimes you need a little bit of extra light just to help you when you, especially when you're trying to look down the top of things. Yeah, likes of um, when you're looking down the throttle bodies or into the airbox, stuff like that. Sometimes you need a little bit of extra overhead light. Sometimes torches can do the job, but it's always a bit awkward to get them in the right position and then they fall and move and so on. But anyway, and I've also been stripping my ZRX 1100 Turbo. Um, I've stripped it right down, checked a lot of stuff. Now, unfortunately, it's in a worse state than what I thought it was. I'll go through a list of things that I found wrong with it. Um, front wheel bearing seized. Front calipers seized. Pads totally destroyed. Uh, let's go up to the top. Um, the front master cylinder, brake master cylinder needed a clean out. It wasn't seized, but it was getting, if it didn't get clean out, it would have been bad. So I cleaned that out. And But the clutch master cylinder was bad, seized. Um, really really gunked up with like um, dirty rusty brake fluid type stuff so that needed new seals so I've done that the clutch save slave cylinder needed new seals and a new spacer they were all damaged and really badly gunked up um, let's go through a bit more now the tank uh, was full of rust you know it's not like um, heavy rust on the inside of the tank but rust uh, deposits in the fuel now when I was trying to start it I was having difficulty starting the thing and now I have had it running and uh, difficult starting it so I had a look I drained the fuel off again and the fuel was like a, a rusty colour so that wasn't good so then I uh, looked at in the tank I could see all this rusty um, deposits all over the show which uh, a good so what I'm going to do to it a good uh, way we'll, we'll get rid of it is if I fill the tank up with fuel, give a good shaker out, leave it overnight, drain it all out. Now, obviously, that fuel's spent, destroyed, whatever, so you have to dispose of that correctly. And then I've got white vinegar I'm going to put in the tank, give that a slush around, drain it out. But what I've had to do in the process, I've had to take the fuel gauge sender off and the fuel tap off, or the uh, uh, pet cock, as they call it, and petrol cock, you know. So, I took that off, I had a look at that, the filter on it was absolutely gumped up, destroyed, loads of green like deposits, on, like I think that's from uh, brass or something because the tubes of brass on it. Um, and the fuel um, tubes were blocked. So stripped them, cleaned them all. Now I couldn't get uh, a new uh, fuel, um, fuel filter to go actually on the pet cock. Um, yeah, so we see the old ones here. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a sorry state. Um, I saw and it's broken as well. So anything that's in there in the tank will get through that anyway. That's why what happened with the rusty water. But anyway, I couldn't get another one of them. So what I've decided to do is get an inline fuel filter, easiest way of doing it, and then you can keep an eye on it quite visually, quite easily. So that's what I'm doing with that. Uh, I've ordered new gaskets for the pet cock fuel tap and the fuel sender um, I've took the cap off as well to clean all that and um, they haven't come yet so I'm not, I'm not can't do that bit just yet but also I take the carburetors off uh, strip them down and oh they're all gummed up a um, couple of the pilot jets idle jets were blocked so that's why it wasn't going to start properly or even idle properly so um i've stripped all that ordered the parts now the parts have come through so that's what i'm going to do in this video i'm going to show you what i'm going to be doing with that i'll strip them down and i'll show you i'll have the camera running in the background and then probably do a voiceover afterwards on that particular video um so 
And to do that, now the rear caliper was totally and utterly seized dramatically. What I had to do with that, I tried to blow them out. Uh, one come out, uh, but I had the other one in the vise with the uh, strip the caliper in half, the other one in the vise, and the bit where you have the brake fluid to go from one side to the other. I blocked that up with a, uh, I got some rubber and rubber and tightened it in the vise so that no air was going to leak from that. So then I put the fuel, the um, so the fuel uh, the uh, bleed screw out because the bleed screw was on that side and blew through the bleed screw now the air had got nowhere else to go except for push the cylinder out wouldn't budge it and that's a 100 psi airline and also i tried to I've got some special um cylinder grips I'm trying to see if i can find them here for you to show you Must be in this drawer yeah these things they grip on the inside of your piston and then you can pull so i tried to grip them with that as well i might see the front, front front ones out with that but not the rear so you push them in like that i find pushing it down tight on the bench as well with all your weight to try and lock it at the next one and then a bit of a jiggle get out but anyway that wouldn't budget with the airline so what i have to do in the end i um because i run nitrous on my, my uh, drag bikes you know what's coming now i used a 650 psi nitrous bottle uh, and did the same thing as I would do with an airline and that certainly got it out, it shot across the room um, so now I've got all the parts for that and replaced that, all the seals have been done seals have been done on the calipers um, and new pads needed all around now the inner sprocket is totally destroyed, it's hooked quite badly so uh, that needed replacing so I decided while I'm replacing that I'll replace the whole chain in the rear sprocket the rear sprocket's okay so I'll keep that as a, as a spare uh, what else? Both tyres are knackered. Um, got damage on the nose cone. The bike had been dropped um, because also the foot peg had snapped in half. And someone tried to alley weld it. As you can see, that was crap. Right. Luckily enough, I could still get them at Kawasaki. They were cheap, so I managed to get a new one of them. Um, and the clocks, I've stripped the clocks down. But there's damage, oh, and then nearly damaged it even more. Back of the clocks, where it's been hit and damaged. That's one of the mounting screws. You've got one, two, and that's supposed to be a third one. So that was all moving around and everything. Uh, we've also got a bit of damage to the uh, the headlamp surround, which is going to have to be repaired and probably painted. Um, and a few of the little things like that have been damaged. So it's been definitely been dropped. and. When I got the log book through, or actually when I was going through the insurance, I got the log book through, um, and I didn't particularly pay too much notice of it because I got it, got it through. I say I got this bike from someone I knew anyway, um, and I, when I went to insure it, they were asking about uh, has it been in a, a, an accident. I said no, not that I'm aware of, and she said, are you sure? So I had a look at the log book, and it's been a category C uh, write-off at some point and been re-put back on the road which is quite legal but i wasn't told it was a category c bike um that means uh, it's been written off by an insurance company because the repairs cost more than what the valuation of the bike would be now obviously garages would use all genuine stuff so it'll be genuine um nose cone headlamps around whatever you want to call it uh genuine clocks genuine this genuine foot peg and all that added up plus the labor came to more than what the bike was valued at so they've written it off and then obviously the option was someone could buy it back put it back on the road or it go into possibly an auction and put it back on the road um now i didn't know that um but uh what i've had to do is i've, I've had to do the, the job myself I, I like my bikes dice so it's a matter of getting it all done so anyway all the stuff for the carburetor has come i've stripped it um, I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to have a video running uh, while I'm rebuilding it and maybe cut it in places and just speed it up sort of thing. Um, and I will do a voiceover at certain bits um, and see where we go from there. Um, so, and also my wheel bearings are come for the front, front um, wheel now so I can put that back together 
and he can even put that on the bike the forks so i did check the for i did think the forks were leaking at one point but uh, i've checked again it seems to be okay but i'm going to have to keep an eye on i'm going to put them back on but i'll keep an eye on on, on them um because otherwise they're going to need seals the dust seal on the top looks perfect i've pushed it up and down many times they're a bit soft for my liking but they certainly don't like the leaking fluid anymore and it certainly sounds like there's no air in it as well but anyway that's another story so i can put all the front end back together with the brake lines and um i've got brake pads coming i've got already got the rear brake pads so they're sorted um and just waiting for the rear disc for the rear because because the rear was uh totally knackered um you know here's one of the pads um totally knackered and in the past it's been running with uh, metal on metal pads anyway um the uh, disc was totally knackered it's like a really really deep grooved record so that's only going to generate heat when you operate the brake and potentially uh, have brake, brake fade on the rear don't use a brake that often or that hard but when you're slow around town or filtering through traffic i'd rather use the rear than the front because i don't want the front diving all the time if you have to you know freak around but anyway i'm going to start on this carb and i will get back to you and uh, see where we go from there all right let me try and stop this video I'm taking off here is the it is a, a water that goes through the coolant system and what it does uh, you have water flow through and out the other side it warms up the carburetors because uh, carb icing is a big issue on some bikes i know the zx7r used to suffer with it and a, a rejet would would sort it out um so i'm just taking that out so i can get the float rolls off a bit tight in there and say the organs are quite good on that As you notice, I didn't take one off because I had one uh, missing. One there, uh, I already took off past, and one screw was missing. But I've got another screw for that. Now, um, I take off here. If I take this, no, I do this first. I've got a big screwdriver for that. Right. I did these. Do do. Sometimes go on with a gun, so yeah, I didn't put them. In. On too tight this time because I knew it was coming off. This is a uh, stabilizes all the carbs together so that they're not like you know, because you've got like bits in between that um, during the carbs together for the fuel, the main fuel goes in there, and then that feeds all the float loads. Now, if you didn't have one of these on, the carbs would move around a bit from each other the vibration and it uh, could well pull out and leak um, so that's what this is yeah so just nearly took this off now there we go and that is off and you see they do flex about a bit if you're not careful now um what i'm doing on this particular one is just going to do doing the jets at the bottom the seals at the bottom We've got the jets in here, new jets, pilot jets, so four of them, some screws, extra screws, um, and some seals, and we'll go from there. Right, so this has to come off. This is an um, yeah, idle adjustment screw. You see it there, idle adjustment screw. So take these off. I can do this one carb on here. I labeled them up because I you know I wanted to make sure I put them back in the, the right way. Now we've got one, two, three, four, 
I've got them labeled from the where the stator would be number one, two, three, four. Um, there's no stator on this, I've got the have generators on this old bike. Um, but anyway, more modern ones are obviously like what you call a stator. So these have been put together with blue thread lock in the past, so I'll do the same. Um, so, float bolt comes off. There's the O-ring. You can see how dirty it was. I have cleaned it up a lot. That was black, and that that was full. That hook, that the bit at the bottom was full. If you opened up the drain bit at the bottom there, which has helped you drain off off uh, the carbs and also any um, water that can collect in it. Now, when I done this initially, the pilot jets out of that heart. They um, were blocked. So I was trying to clean them out. I managed to get three clean, but this was blocked all the way through one of these. And I tried to blow it out and I lost it all across the garage. So I ended up <laughs> buying four new ones. Because, yeah, I could replace one, but de depending on wear and tear and whatnot, they might be slightly given a different little amount of fuel. Very unlikely, but I'd rather change all four. So that would go in that one there. And there's actually one in this one. So that isn't the one that's missing. I'll show you what they look, look like because I'm replacing them all anyway. Get the right size screwdriver for the job. Yeah. There we go. Coming out now. Let's take it upside down to grab it. There we go. There's the old one. Oh, old one. Try to get it to focus in on that bit there, but it's not doing it. All right. There's the old one. A bit dirty, but I cleaned that one up and that's free all the way through. Now, the thingy ones wasn't the, um, the other one that I couldn't uh, sort out. So I'm putting four new ones in. But the main jets are okay. The mains are hit them there. Now this couldn't so the markings on the side got a 95 in it. Now whether I'll need bigger, smaller, whatever, because of the turbo, it depends on the boost. Uh, if we go higher on the boost, I might need higher on the um on the amount. So I'm just gonna change the gasket only reason saying is because when i put it had a look at it inside it was quite flat there wasn't much protruding from it so i was thinking well because it's been on and off a few times put a new o-ring in and, and we know it's not going to leak just giving it a bit of a scrape and a bit there as you see it's dirty i've got an airline here And then we get a new orange gasket on. Like an orange, but it's a funny shape in it. Um, just because of the way the like a ring to go around in a circle more than anything. Now it's a funny shape one that one. Yeah, it's definitely a funny. There we go. It's been squashed a bit. Yeah, it's gone in fine. And then this can go back on. There's only one way it can go. You can see the angle there. The float, float bits was, were dirty as well. Everything was dirty, so I cleaned it all up. So anyway, and there's two locating lugs there, so you can, you can never get it in the wrong place. So that's it there. And just massive screw it back together. Now, um, I'll do the other three, and then I'll... Um, talk you through anything else I need to tell you on this just before I do blue thread lock I use the Loctite stuff it's medium strength the blue one normally um, and you just put a little dab not a massive amount really I, end up, I always end up putting a bit too much on this one's a 
definitely a bit on the low side. So I need to get some more out of there. There you go, that's all you need. Hi, well, I've done that, all that together, nicely, um, all four new pilot jets in there. And I've managed to replace the screws here for uh, new ones because we had one missing. This is for the, 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 the cooling pipes come from the uh, radiator. Now, uh, also there was a screw missing there. Now, when I was looking at the schematics, it only shows three. But I'd rather have one there as well. Now that's the choke mechanism. So obviously when you pull the choke, that's why there's a screw missing here, because that screw is on uh, the choke mechanism, which then pulls that across like that, because it goes from across from there to there. Right. So these two are air, air, air pipes. Like um, they normally go to the air box, but these are actually going to, if I remember rightly. Where are they going to? I think they're going to uh, the plenum that they made, I think. I'll, uh, we'll know more when I put it back together. Now, what I decided I might do here, I might take one of the tops off and show you what you should be checking in the tops. Now, there's four screws. I might say just unscrew them. Now, in here, there's a spring in here, so you want to be careful it doesn't pop off and you lose any bits. Right, so one, that's why I got my thumb over it, two, just let it come off uh, slowly, and um, three, right, that comes off, you have the top, which has a spring, goes in there, and then in here you have the diaphragm, now the diaphragm comes out with the slide and the needle. Now you've got to check this diaphragm, there's no splits, cuts, uh, or that it doesn't seal correctly around the top of there. And um, the needle is there. The needle on the standard bikes are non-adjustable. But what I, I have done, because we needed to raise the needle up a bit, is I put a, a washer underneath to raise it up by that mill just to see if it makes a difference we'll find out when we run the bike but anyway the needle goes in through the hole just drops in and then this device sits over the top of the needle i'm not sure what it's called and your spring sits around that and that's basically all that's there on that there's nothing pretty much in there uh, these are one these uh, these ZRX only go in one way because if you try and put them in the wrong way the slide won't go in because the slide is slightly different so it goes in one way only which is that way and then the needle carefully let's try and hold that up with the other finger goes into the jet down the bottom there and obviously the needle is tap tapered so the more you bring that off the throttle up the more fuel it'll let through. So that's simply enough, that. So when you put it back together, you make sure that sits in properly, all the way around. The top goes on with the spring, don't forget the spring, and that sits in the recess. I normally push the top down and hold it down with my finger, then put the screws in. They have, again, blue thread lock which I'm going to do on this one a little bit later when I've got the other one for there, uh, which is medium strength. So you can get it out again, because the screw head, if you had strong strength on them, you would certainly have trouble getting it back off, which would be um, quite uh, difficult um, to get off without damaging the carb top. Uh, some people, when they have turbo bikes, replace these carb tops if they can get them for stainless metal made ones. Now, I haven't got any yet. Whether I can get some or will get some will be a different matter whether I need them because it's only going to be a low boost turbo because what can happen is the pressure can blow the tops off, I believe. So, um, or break them. I've had a few people who've done that, even with nitrous, have done that as well. 
But anyway, that's it. That's it for the car brushes. That's it for this this video. Um, and my next video will be doing the wheel bearing on the front. I've already took it out, but I explain what I had to do to get it out and a couple of little different tools I've got that I can get it out with. Um, and that'll be that. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.